Hi, I'm Mohamed Sadri, PhD student, University of Bologna, and postdoctoral researcher to Kaiserslautern. In this video, I am going to talk about what is an XI stream interface. So far, in the previous two videos, whatever we talked about was only and only mentioning XI memory mapped interfaces. In XI memory mapped interfaces, whatever read or write transaction happens through the interface, it contains an address. The address indicates the destination to which the write transaction is going to be written and the destination from which the read transaction is going to read the data. But in your system, which you implement on the FPGA, this is not always necessary. In many cases, you have just flow of data through your modules, meaning that one module receives the data, it performs a set of processing on the data and passes the data directly to the next module. In this kind of processing, you don't really need an address. As a result, there exists another type of XI interface widely used for XI components, and that is XI streaming interface. And if you look at one XI streaming interface, you can notice that it is very simple. It doesn't contain the address. The data flow is in one direction. There is no read or write. One module is always writing. The other module is always receiving data or reading. And in fact, when we compare one XI streaming interface to the XI memory mapped interface, we can see that the XI streaming interface contains just one XI channel. Here are two examples of, in fact, two very simple XI stream subsystems. The first one is a simple signal processing system. And the second one is a video processing system, which is again a kind of signal processing system. Here we have the A2D probably located outside the FPGA or if you have the Zinc device or you have the Kintex device then A2D is on the FPGA itself depending on the rate that you want to do the analog to digital conversion. Anyway you have samples coming out of the A2D and the samples are entering an FIR filter and then they are passing through the FIR filter and they are going to discrete Fourier transform and the result is going to the output. In this system, the data is flowing through the blocks and you don't really need an address when, whenever you are transferring the data from, for example, the FIR block to the DFT block. You just read the first sample, next sample, next sample and from this side the output of FIR you are passing the, out, the result to the next module. Again here we have the camera stream. The camera stream again enters a kind of filter and then a transform unit and each step in this subsystem performs its own specific task on the data and it passes the data to the next module. So, if I really want to compare one XI memory mapped interface with one XI stream interface, if we recall from the previous videos, we can see that if we have one XI master memory mapped component and one XI slave memory mapped component, for each connection between the XI master to the XI slave, in memory mapped mode, in fact, you have five channels, three channels for write transactions and two channels for read transactions. I have already talked about these channels previously, but if you look at one at one XI streaming connection, which features one XI stream master and one XI stream slave, and the data is flowing just in one direction from the master to the, to the slave, then you can see that in terms of signals in the implementation, you have practically signals equal to one of these channels here, just 
one channel is completely enough to do the data transfer so if I want to, to talk a little bit in more detail I can say if you have one XI master stream component and one XI slave stream component then there exists a set of specific signals between these two components in your RTL here are most important signals there are more but I don't want to go into the detail right now so from the XI slave component to the XI master component we have the T ready meaning that the XI slave is telling I am ready you can send the data and then from the XI master we have the T valid to the XI slave meaning that whenever T valid is 1 is equal to um, high then this means that the data on that clock cycle is valid and the XI slave can grab the data and whenever T lost is active it means that this is the end of frame this is the end of packet this packet of data is finished and a new packet is going to be begin soon so I want to briefly review the naming style that Xilinx is using for its XI interfaces if I have one XI memory mapped unit with XI memory mapped slave and master interfaces then we can see this naming convention in the name of the ports of the components for the master port we have M underline XI underline the rest of the names of the signal for slave S underline XI underline the rest of the name of the signals but if you have one streaming component you can see that the name of the master port contains an S so for example M underline XI S underline the rest of the name which is selected by the user S underline XI S underline the rest of the name selected by the user now I want to indicate a very important point suppose that you have one XI streaming subsystem which features a set of components connected one after another and they perform a specific processing task on the data eventually this data is needed to be stored somehow in the memory so that it can be accessed by the other components in the system for example suppose that you do a kind of processing on an image eventually you should store the processed image somewhere in a shared memory so that the CPU can have access to that region in the set shared memory and read the results of this processing but we have a simple problem here the output of this unit is basically an XI stream interface it doesn't contain an address so it cannot directly get connected to the, to the DRAM for example DRAM controller module or DRAM subsystem it cannot get connected directly to your memory subsystem we need a kind of module in between that, pe that performs this transfer this tr data transfer and this conversion for us let's make the example a little bit more complicated suppose that we have an XI, XI stream processing subsystem here they perform a kind of processing task on the incoming image and then we need to store the results in the memory so that later the CPU can have access to the results and do its own operation and then after that there exists again another XI stream subsystem which is responsible for reading this data this process data from the memory and transferring it to the output for example here we are showing a very simple video processing system in which we have a camera then we have for example one filter one transformation unit the output is going to be stored in the shared DRAM memory the CPU is later to do is responsible to do its own specific operation on the result 
and after that we have a kind of post processing unit which reads which performs a kind of post processing operation on the image stored in the DRAM memory and then it passes the post processed image to the HDMI for example controller which transfers the data to the HDMI interface of our board here what we really need is a module capable of sitting here between the memory mapped interface and the stream interface in Xilinx IP library there exists a module called Axi Data Mover and this Axi Data Mover is responsible for doing two tasks first it is responsible or it is capable of reading your Axi stream interface accepting your Axi stream interface and transferring the data to the to the memory so from one side it is talking Axi stream and from the other side it is talking Axi memory mapped it is also capable of doing the reverse um, direction from one side it reads from the memory mapped subs subsystem and from the other side it passes the data to your streaming subsystem in this figure what I am showing in the blue blocks are principally just one component each Axi data mover is capable of performing both of these operations in parallel concurrently so each Axi data mover contains one Axi slave stream port for receiving the stream interface one Axi master memory port for writing the received data into the memory again another Axi master memory mapped port for reading the data from memory and another Axi stream master port for writing the data to the streaming subsystem so you should be careful that both of these interfaces are axi masters both of the memory mapped interfaces are axi masters however for streaming interfaces we have one axi slave stream interface here and one axi master stream here in practice this unit should be programmed by the CPU so that it can perform the correct operation for example one question that you may ask is that where in the memory this data is going to be written this is something that the CPU indicates and programs the actual data mover with that value for example when your operating system boots for the first time and then the, your operating system comes off and your application gets executed the first task that the CPU performs is it allocates a memory on the DRAM then it obtains the physical address pointing to that memory and then it writes this physical address to Axi Data Mover so whenever your video stream enters the Axi Data Mover the Axi data mover begins writing the data to the specified address by the CPU and this is the address that the CPU will later use to perform its own processing and then this part of Axi data mover will later use to read the data and transfer to the streaming subsystem of output we will talk about this in, in more detail in later videos so as I mentioned the Axi data mover needs to be configured the Axi data mover produces a set of interrupts these interrupts should be handled by the CPU and we will talk about in fact handling one Axi data mover in detail later in later videos there exist customized versions of Axi data mover two very famous customized version of Axi Data Mover are Axi Central DMA Engine and Axi Video DMA 
In fact, when we look at the Vivado IP library, we can see XI Data Mover, XI Central DMA, and XI Video DMA existing in the library. Principally, they are the same component. We will talk about each of these components later in more detail, and I will teach you how you can use them in your design. These videos are hobby for me. They are not official, but I would like to thank Professor Luca Benini of University of Bologna and ETH Zurich, and also Professor Norbert Brain of TU Kaiserslautern for their support. You can always find the latest material related to these videos and to my zinc training course at greenelectrons.com and googlia.com, which are both my own websites. Thank you.